Kaohei compares himself to a migratory bird, constantly moving from place to place due to his parents. Thus, he tries to avoid forming attachments, since he knows they will be short-lived. That's why he chooses not to get too involved with people. Instead, the boy focuses on living in the present and creating lasting memories. Kaohei is now traveling to Shiona City, which is on Tamatsu Island. He chose this city because he lived there for a short time about seven years ago. The boy thinks that on that island he will find many things he didn't know about. After some time, the boy arrives in the city and he is now entering his school. Surprisingly, a beautiful yellow-haired girl welcomes him and informs him that she is the vice president of that school council. It appears her name is Sendo Erika. Thus, as a representative of the school, she welcomes him to the Shuchiken Academy. Kaohei is memorized by the girl's beauty. Hence, he moves forward to shake her hand. Surprisingly, the moment their hands touched, the girl got a strange feeling. Hence, she jumps from the surprise and falls to the ground. The boy becomes confused by her reaction. Thus, he asks her if she is fine. Erika is still looking at him like he is a weird creation. For some strange reason, she is nervous because of him. The boy tries to get close to her to see if she is really fine. But Erika moves away from him instantly and tells him that she is fine. At that moment, a new boy comes there and asks Erika if she is fine. After that, he looks around and sees Kaohei standing there. Hence, the boy asks Erika who Kaohei is and what's happening there. At this, Erika hurriedly stands up and informs Hachimendera that Kaohei is a transfer student. She then tells the boy to give Kaohei a tour of the dormitory, since she has some urgent business to attend to. I think, I just smell a lie there. The girl needs to up her lying game. Funnily, she ran from there like a demon was following her. Hence, the boys get confused by her strange behavior. Hachimendera then faces Kaohei and sternly asks him if he did something. At this, Kaohei replies to him in the same tone and states that he didn't do anything. They both then introduce themselves and shake hands. On the other hand, Erika is leaning against a tree and she is shaking badly. Apparently, this is the first time something like that happened to her. Hence, she can't seem to understand what is special about Kaohei, that's what made her this startled. Meanwhile, Kaohei informs Hachimendera that he has been bouncing around from one school to another because it is dad's job. However, he is now happy because this is a boarding school, so finally he doesn't have to worry about moving constantly. Though he was a bit surprised after getting a unique welcome from Erika. Hachimander is amused by their interaction since he made Erika scream, who is a fearless person. Hence, he tells the boy that he must have done something to her without realizing or she seriously hated something about him. Kaohei nervously smiles at this and jokes to Hachimandera that he is good at making people depressed. At this, the boy tells Kaohei to call him Sukasa. He then points at the building and informs Kaohei that this is Hakuho Dormitory, where they all live. Apparently, boys live on the first and second floor. Meanwhile, girls are on the third and fourth floor. They then enter the building. Shikasa gives friendly advice to Kaohei to never step foot on a girl's floor even by mistake. Because if a mate finds him there, then she won't hold back whacking him with a frying pan. Shikasa is now taking Kaohei to his room. Meanwhile, Kaohei is looking around and realizes that this is his new home now. Suddenly, bags of salmon chips fall onto him from above. A second later, a girl screams at him to pick up the snacks. Hence, Kaohei looks up to see her coming down the stairs. Unfortunately, the girl slips and crashes onto him. After a moment, he opens his eyes and notices the girl sitting on top of him. Funnily, she is shaking him vigorously to wake him up. However, instead of waking him, he faints again from the force of her shaking. The girl sees that he is not waking up. Hence, she stands up and excitedly states that she will wake him up with her Kanata special. Rip Kaohei's peaceful sleep. Seems like Kaohei is not dying today, since Hina-chan stops the crazy girl from nearly killing him. Shukasa then steps forward and slightly shakes the boy to wake him up. Surprisingly, Kanata gets excited hearing Kaohei's name. Hence, she faces Haruna, who tells her that it's Kaohei. Finally, Kaohei wakes up hearing their names and remembers that they both are sisters. It appears they have known each other since they played together when they were little. As an excited baby, Canada happily welcomes Kaohei. Shikasa gets confused by their interaction. Hence, he asks them if they know each other from childhood. At this, Kaohei informs him that he lived in this city for a while, seven years ago. Funnily, with a straight face, Canada threatens the boy that if he has forgotten about them, then she would have wrapped him up in a footin' and dropped him in the ocean. She is a packet of the energetic bar, I'm starting to like her. 
Haruna reminds her sister to say sorry to Kawe. Hence, Canada apologizes to the boy for knocking down the stairs. To make up for it, she sweetly gives him the chips packet. Hence, Kawe smiles at her sweetness. At night, Erika is in a dark office with the boy. She tells him about her interaction with Kawe. The girl feels strange about the whole thing since she felt an unreal sensation moving into her body when she touched the boy. However, she doesn't intend to let it take control. Meanwhile, in the dormitory, Canada is having fun telling the girls about knocking down Kauhei, whereas Tsukasa and Kauhei hear their laughter from their room. Unfortunately, Kauhei's things got misplaced because of a routing mistake, so to help the boy, Tsukasa is sharing his room with him. Kauhei is happy to be there, and he is hopeful to find the things he has been missing so far at that school. The next day, Tsukasa and Kauhei are having lunch in the canteen. Kanad and Haruna also join them. The girls apologize to him for being loud last night. Haruna informs the boy that they often do tea parties and gatherings like this. At this, Kanada states that they should do the next party at Kauhei's place. Kanada then gives a thumbs up to the chief for cooking yummy food. Shikasa informs Kauhei that the student council hunted this famous chief. At this, Kauhei gets sad remembering that Erika is ignoring him. Kanada then gives him a school map and tells him that he has to follow the map and take pictures of all 108 places. Also, he has to complete it by the entrance ceremony. After some time, Kauhei takes pictures of the places, like the gym, lecture hall, and water fountain. Suddenly, he sees a girl running behind a rabbit. After seeing the girl struggling, he decides to help her. Hence, he catches the rabbit and gives it to the girl. The girl names her rabbit Yukimaru since he is as white as snow. Kauhei notices her wearing a different uniform, hence he asks her why she is dressed like this. Thus, the girl informs him that this is the uniform of the Laurel Ring. It's like a council group that helps maintain the chapel. At that moment, a lady comes there wearing a nun outfit. It appears she is a make, working as a sister there. She is also a counselor, hence she tells the boy to meet her if anything bothers him. Kauhei then introduces himself to them. Hence, the little girl also introduces herself and her name is Shiro. After that, Shiro brings the boy to the directing student's building, which is used by the student council. Hence, Kauhei takes out the camera to take pictures. However, a white-haired boy comes behind him and asks him what he's doing there. Shiro comes forward and informs the boy that Kauhei is a transfer student and he helped her catch Yukimaru for her, so she guided him there to repay him. Sai tells Shiro to go from there. After that, he tells Kauhei to leave. However, a golden-haired boy comes out of the building and mockingly asks Sai if Kauhei is his guest. At this, Sai tells him that Kauhei is just an ordinary student who is passing by. Lori stands beside Kauhei and starts tugging his hair. Surprisingly, he invites Kauhei for a tea. After that, he shows him the building. Kauhei is feeling strange about him, and now he understands why this building is called the Devil's Lair. Lori then takes him to the directing student room, where the student council members gather. Surprisingly, Erika is inside the room, and after seeing Kauhei there, she gets angry at Lori. However, the boy gives her a chilly response, which makes her more angry. Therefore, she walks away from the room. Lori then informs Kauhei that Erika is his little sister. Hearing this, the boy becomes shocked. Whereas, Lori informs him that he is a sixth-year student and the student council president. After this, Sei introduces himself as Togi Saichiro, and he is the student council treasurer. Lori then gets close to the boy and asks him if he believes in love at first sight. Funnily, Lori is trying to set Kauhei with her sister. However, Kauhei doesn't understand this and asks him what he means. Kauhei, my man, sometimes your brain short circuits faster than a toaster in a rainstorm. Lori drops a bomb at Kauhei by telling him that Erika fell in love with him at first sight. He then tells him to get along with his sister. Funnily, Kauhei is shocked by all this. After some time, Kauhei goes inside the hot bath without clothes. Surprisingly, Erika is also there and she slaps him hard for coming there. Funnily, the slap mark is printed on his cheek and to make his misery worse, everyone knows that he barged inside the girl's bath unclothed. Seems like today is his bad day, since Canada also gives him a discipline sticker. She then informs him that when he will get 10 stickers, then he will get a wonderful punishment. Kauhei clarifies that when he went there, the curtains were reserved. At this, Shikasa tells the girl that he is telling the truth since he heard Tori talking about this with Sei. Thus, they realize that Tori is the one who is behind all this since he likes playing pranks like that. On the other hand, Erika is passing from there. 
but after hearing this, she stops to listen to their conversation. Cowhay is feeling bad, hence he states that he needs to apologize to Erica. The girl gently smiles after hearing this. After some time, both boys are getting to their room. While going there, Tsukasa informs him that his stuff has arrived and that he can move to his room tomorrow. Suddenly, they see Erika coming their way. Hence, Kauhei tries to say something to her. However, the girl speaks first and tells him to meet her tomorrow at 5 p.m. at Hosaka Zelkova, since she has something to tell him. After the girl goes from there, Tsukasa starts teasing Kauhei. He informs him that Hosaka Zelkova is a popular spot in the school to confess the love. The next day, Kauhei is clicking pictures for the school task. Hence, he goes inside the church to click pictures. However, he gets shocked to see a boy sucking blood from a girl. Kauhei gets frozen on the spot from the fright. Surprisingly, the boy looks up and he has vampire teeth. Meanwhile, Erika gets angry at Kauhei for not coming to meet her. Kauhei finally reaches Hosaka Zelkova to meet Erika, but she is not there. Instead, the boy discovers a note from her, in which she expresses her disappointment and anger. Kauhei lets out a heavy sigh, as he knows the situation has gotten worse for him. The next day, Sukasa and Kauhei are in the hall for the entrance ceremony. The boy is feeling bad for standing up Erika like that. Hence, he decides to apologize to her for this also. Kauhei then notices that the seats in the hall are not designed by the class. Thus, Chukasa tells him to wait, since he will figure out the answer in a while. They both then take their seat. After that, the lights dim in the hall, and a single spotlight illuminates Lori standing on the stage, clutching a rose. This boy acts like a dramatic hero of a flop show. Lori shows his disappointment in leaving this school since this is his last year. He then dramatically promises to love them all until his time comes to an end. As expected, the girls are gushing over him and acting like he is their Prince Charming. Meanwhile, Kauhei remembers the moment he saw Lori sucking blood from the girl. All the students seem to love him for his playful nature, and to their bonus, he is also handsome. After giving the performance, Lori walks away from the stage. Meanwhile, Kauhei notices that the boy is very popular. Shikasa informs him that despite Lori's playful appearance, he gets things done in critical situations. Suddenly, all the students start shouting in excitement. Kauhei gets confused by their reaction. Hence, Shukasa informs him that the star has come, and that's why they are so excited. At that moment, Erika comes to the stage and everyone gets silent. They are watching her intently. The girl tells them to hold each other's hand if they are feeling lonely. She then states that no matter how lonely we feel, there are some things we should and shouldn't do. At this moment, a spotlight appears on Kauhei and everyone's attention shifts to him now. Funnily, Erika is taking her revenge on him by insulting him in front of everyone. She taunts him for entering the girl's bath without clothes. At this, Kauhei gets angry and he stands up to explain. However, after seeing everyone looking at him, he gets quiet. After some time, everyone is in their classes. There, the professor introduces him to students. Funnily, the boys start asking him questions about the girl's bath. Suddenly, a very serious looking girl enters the room and surprisingly, everyone gets silent after seeing her. The boys joke about her and call her by the nickname they gave her, Freeze Dry. Wow, what a unique name. These high schoolers need to stop giving these cheesy nicknames. The professor tells Kauhei to take the last seat in the first row, which happens to be behind Kiri. Kauhei goes there and introduces himself to her. Kiri dryly tells him her hand and continues looking outside the window. Meanwhile, Kauhei sits in his seat and starts staring at her. After some time, the class ended. Funnily, Kauhei got a new nickname, which is the king of the girl's bath. Everyone is calling him by this name and Kauhei is getting irritated by this. Thus, he decides to meet Erika and talk to her about all this. After some time, he tried to talk to her, but every time something happened and he was unable to meet her. Hence, he feels sad because of it. However, like a sweet girl, Haruna cheers him up by stating that they both live in the same campus, so there will be plenty of opportunities for him to apologize to her. Haruna then continues watering the plants. It appears she is in charge of keeping the school grounds clean. Suddenly, Haruna notices Erika passing by. Hence, she hurriedly informs the boy about her. Without wasting any time, Kauhei runs to meet her. However, he accidentally bumps into Kiri, and they both fall to the ground. The boy then says sorry to her and starts collecting the student's diaries that she was carrying. After a while, they collected all the diaries and put them in the boxes. Kauhei then helps her carry the boxes. At night, Kauhei enters the dormitory 
and he is disappointed since he didn't get the chance to apologize to Erika. He notices that Canada is surrounded by the students, hence he asks Haruo what Canada is doing. At this, the girl informs him that Canada is auctioning off things that last year's graduate left behind. Funnily, she is selling stuff like toys that the previous famous graduate girls used. There is no surprise that boys are fighting over toys and buying them for a huge price just because their crush held it or something like that. However, the good thing about this is that they use this money to buy the equipment for the dorms. Apparently, this is an important role the RA has been filling for generations there. Kanata's auctioning gets interrupted, as a make angrily appears there with her famous fry pan. Kanata says sorry to her and calls her by the nickname she gave her, which is Maru-chan. Funnily, a make gets more angry at this, since she doesn't like this nickname. After some time, Kauhei finally gets his room. Hence, he unpacked all his things and went to the balcony. Surprisingly, Kanata jumps onto him and tells him that they are here for the tea party. Haruna also comes there and the three of them enjoy the tea. After that, Kanata asks him if he gets all the pictures of Suchikam Academy's secrets. At this, the boy says yes. He then gives her the data of the pictures. Funnily, Kanata uses him to do all the work and collect pictures for the temple. I knew, she is the most intelligent among them all. Kanada looks around his room and notices that the boy doesn't have much stuff. Thus, Kauhei tells her that he moves a lot, that's why he keeps minimal things. However, Kanada is not letting him live in peace. She tells him that he needs more things like a tea server, coffee miller, and utensils for the tea parties. To his amusement or misery, the two sisters have decided to come to his place often. Kauhei isn't looking too disturbed by though, since after seeing them smiling, he feels good. He finally has some genuine friends. The next day, Shiro went to feed her rabbit, but unfortunately, he drugged the hole and escaped from there. Meanwhile, Kauhei notices the students viewing the results from the mock exams. Haruna also comes there and stands beside him. She informs him that Erika also gets top marks in every paper except math. Kiriha is the one who always beats her in math. Thus, Haruna feels that Kiriha does it on purpose. In the class, Kauhei is watching Kiriha and thinking about what Haruna said. Kiriha always spends her time alone and in class, she always stares out the window. There seems to be some mystery about her. Suddenly, Kauhei notices a rabbit outside the window. After the class, Shiro informs Kauhei that Yukimaru has run away again. At this, Kauhei also gets worried and tells the girl that he saw Yukimaru outside the window during his class. Shiro gets desperate and grabs his collar. She then worriedly asks him where he sought his rabbit. At that moment, Sei comes there and angrily asks the boy what he's doing with his sister. Seeing that his sister is crying, he gets more angry at Kauhei. Thankfully, Shirko handled the situation before it got out of control. She tells his brother that Yukimaru ran away and Kauhei saw him. The boy reassures her that he will find her rabbit. Hence, he runs away from there, before saying to Sei that they will talk later. Thus, they all get together to search for Yukimaru. Kauhei meets Kirihaz, who is reading a book in the forest. He asks her about the rabbit, but she tells him that nothing good ever comes out from involving ourselves with others. At this, Kauhei intensely looks at her and states that he thinks it's a waste if we don't do it. He then goes from there. Everyone is searching for a rabbit, but they still can't find him. Kauhei comes to the sports area where he sees Erika standing across from him. Hence, he moves forward to meet her, but in that second, a boy kicks the ball, sending it hurtling their way. To make matters worse, Yukimaru chose this moment to come out of his hiding. Hence, the ball is about to squish him, but thankfully at the last moment, Kauhei grabs him and jumps from there. Surprisingly, Erika comes there and gently tells him to stand up. Thus, she offers him her hand. However, she quickly moves her hand before he even touches her. Kauhei doesn't seem to be much surprised by this, since this is the second time she has done that. Out of nowhere, Lori comes behind the girl and tells Kauhei that he has scratched his hand. At that moment, Kauhei recalls him sucking the blood. Hence, he flinches seeing him get close to him. Lord just wipes his blood with a handkerchief and then puts it back in his pocket. Shiro then comes there and hugs her rabbit. In the evening, Kauhei is feeling bad for not getting the chance to apologize to Erika. He feels that he has bad luck. Seems like his luck is not bad, as at that moment Erika appears there. The boy then apologizes to her. Erika is cool about it, and she doesn't seem to have any grudges against him. She then offers him her hand to complete their handshakes and to welcome him properly into the school. Hence, the boy shakes her hand and finally, nothing weird happened this time. 
On the other hand, Say gives a biopsy report of Kauhei to Lori. After seeing the results, Lori realizes that Kauhei is not an average boy. No wonder he was making Erika crazy. Whereas, Kauhei asks Erika if she ever fell in love at first sight. At this, the girl says no to him. Kauhei realizes that Lori pulled a prank on him. Meanwhile, Erika becomes angry at her brother for saying these stupid things about her. Kauhei, Haruna, Kanata, Erika, and Shikasa are going to school together. While going there, Kanata invites Erika to the tea party. Thus, she agrees to come and even decides to bring Shiro with her. Meanwhile, all the schoolboys are getting jealous seeing Erika getting close to Kauhei. On the other hand, Lori is trying to set up his sister and Kauhei. However, Erika gets angry at him for joking with them. Hence, she goes from there. Whereas, Lori is teasing Kauhei by saying to him that he has a tasty looking neck. The boy gets nervous at this and tells him to stop joking around. Erika then calls him to join her. Before going, Kauhei advises Lori to not prank others too much. After this, the boy goes from there. Meanwhile, Lori is looking at them intensely. His mood just switches in seconds from being playful to serious. I think he got lost in the character selection screen and accidentally picked Ice Prince and Sugar Rush at the same time. They all are in the canteen having lunch. Haruna scolds Kauhei for eating the same thing every day. At this, Kauhei and Shukasa share some of their food to have variety. Haruna also shares her salad with the boy. They then notice Kiriha sitting alone in the canteen. Surprisingly, the girl is adding too much spice in her food, trying to get the perfect kick. But just as she gives the bottle a shake, the lid pops off, and a pile of spice drops into her dish. It looks like her food is about to audition for the role of Spicius Volcano in a disaster movie. Seeing this catastrophe, Kanata grabs the spoon and starts commentary about how she is going to overcome this situation. Meanwhile, as a gentle soul, Haruna stands up to help the girl, but she was surprised to see her eating that spicy dish. Later that day, Kauhei watches Kanata singing a weird song. The boy says to her that her hobbies are too niche, and she even likes strange characters like Nupio when she was little too. At this, Kanata gets defensive and tells him that Nupio is cute. To prove her point, she shows him the character. Seeing that, Kauhei remembers their time together as children. Meanwhile, Kanata tells him that she kept this for a long time and Haruna also liked this. After saying this, she realizes her mistake and keeps her mouth shut, whereas the boy is too shocked to speak. Hence, they both are looking at each other. At that moment, Haruna comes there and asks them why they are staring at each other. Funnily, they both look like they were caught stealing the food. So to cover their error, they hurriedly start singing the song to distract Haruna. At night, they are having a tea party in Kauhei's room. They all enjoy their time by eating yummy food and teasing each other. Canada suddenly announces that to make their bond strong, they all will go downtown tomorrow. The next day, they all go downtown and spend their day shopping together. In the evening, they go to the beach. There, Kauhei and Erika are watching the ocean from afar. The boy feels happy that he came to that island since he is having fun every day there, and he even has good friends now. Erika then tells the boy that they all should create a fun school life together. Hence, Kauhei agrees with her plan. Suddenly, Erika becomes tense as she warns the boy to be wary of his brother. At this, Kauhei gets confused since he doesn't get why she said this. The next day, Lori started Kauhei by suddenly appearing in front of him. He then tells him to come to the directing student's room after school. After some time, all the classes ended. Erika is looking for Kauhei, hence she asks Sukasa about him. Thus, the boy informs her that he doesn't know since Kauhei just told him that there was something he had to take care of. On the other hand, Kauhei is with Lori. Surprisingly, Lori tells him that he wants to play a game with him, and in this process, they will get to know each other. Shiro comes there to give them tea. After that, Sai tells her to go from there and do her duties. The girl then walks away from there. After this, the boys start the game. They are playing a game in which they have to spin the spinner, and when a spinner lands on a number, they have to take that card and read it aloud. The player then has to perform the task written on the card. Lori gets a penalty card, which says that he had to stab the blade in his own hand. Kauhei finds this ridiculous and doesn't take it seriously. However, Lori states that he can't break the rule. Hence, he stands up and stabs his hand with a knife. Kauhei is shocked by his action, but after recovering from shock, he gets angry at Lori. Nonetheless, Lori stays calm and goes near the boy. Thus, he tells him that it's not a big deal. The boy then takes out the knife from his hand. Surprisingly, his hand gets healed again. 
Seeing that, Kauhei's eyes widen in surprise. Meanwhile, Lori is enjoying his reaction. He then shows the boy his fangs and tells him that his neck really looks good. On the other hand, Erika is standing outside their room. Kauhei imagines Lori biting his neck, but then he comes back to reality and realizes that the boy hasn't bitten him yet. Hence he gets relaxed a bit. Lori tells him that he has no intention of feeding on his blood. Surprisingly, he then reveals his true identity and tells the boy that they are vampires. Kauhei realizes that the boy said that we, this means there are others like him. Surprisingly, Erika enters the room and reveals that she is also a vampire. Lori tells the boy that since he knows their secret, he can't let him leave this place. Thus, he tells Kauhei that he wants him to join the student council. At this, Kauhei bravely asks the boy what if he refuses to join them. Lori smirks at this and states that he will erase his memory, just like he did to that girl he was feeding blood from. Kauhei's eyes widened in realization. Meanwhile, Lori tries to pressure him as he tells him that he will make him forget everything that's happened since he transferred to this island. Kauhei feels uneasy, but he realizes that it's no different from moving to a new town and starting fresh, something he's done many times before. Realizing this, he calms down, knowing he can handle it just like he always has. Hence, he says yes to the boy and tells him to remove his memory. However, he stops midway as he recalls all the time he spent with his friends. Seeing his troubled expression, Erika feels bad for him. Whereas, Lori tells the boy that they will ease his memory since they don't need people who can't be responsible for the life they have walked. Lori then says to him that at that school, only those who have the will can enjoy their time there. Thus, Lori tells Erika to handle this and then walks away from there. After some time, they both are standing outside. Erika asks the boy last time if he wants to change his mind or not. Thus, Kauhei faces Erika and tells her to go ahead with it. Hence, Erika's eyes get red as she starts the process. She puts her hand on the boy's forehead and an energy surrounds them. However, after a moment, Eric stops the process. The boy opens his eyes and sees her crying. Hence, she tells him that it hurts her to remove his memory and all the things that happened to him at this school. And especially it hurts, since he is her friend. Hence, she angrily asks him how he can let go of all the things that happened at the school. The boy has gained a beautiful friendship at this school. Even now, Kanade and Haruna are preparing tea in his room to welcome him. Whereas, Shiro is sad that Kauhei will lose his memories of them. However, the only person who has some hope in this situation is Lori. He believes that nothing will happen. Seems like he is right. Kauhei is thinking about all this and he realizes that he can't let go of his friends and he wants to enjoy his life with everyone. He finally made his decision. Hence, he puts a hand on Erika's shoulder and tells her to not erase his precious time there. He then confesses to her that he came to that school because he got sick of transferring schools. Hence, he doesn't want to repeat the same thing anymore. In other words, he doesn't want to lose his precious friends. The girl gently smiles at him. After that, they meet Lori, Sei, and Shiro. Kauhei requests Lori to let him become a part of the student council. At this, they all become happy and now Kauhei is officially a part of the student council. Funnily, the boy thought that he was going to do great work. But to his horror, Lori is making him polish the floor. In the morning, Kauhei gets ready for school. This is just like his ordinary days, but for him today is special since he made a decision to make new memories in this school. Kauhei and Erika go to meet Lori. In his office, Lori is telling the boy about the vampires. Shiro comes there and serves them tea. Lori informs the boy that Shiro and Sei know they are vampires. Apparently, the Sendis and Togas have a long-standing history. Lori then explains the characteristics of vampires, which are high physical capabilities, high resistance to illnesses, and immortality. They don't die like humans, and if Lori was a human, then he probably has the world record for the oldest man alive. Kauhei is curious about Erika's age, hence he looks at her. Funnily, the girl hurriedly shakes her head and tells him that she is the same age as him. After this, she informs him that they are not repulsed by garlic, nor will they turn to ash under the morning sun. Basically, they don't have any weaknesses. Now that's something new, it seems like even vampires have variety in them. Erika drinks the tea, but she flinches as the tea is hot. At this, Lori mentions that Erika's weakness is hot food. After that, they inform the boy that they can erase memories and they carve blood. At this, Kauhei looks at Lori, who is drinking blood in a champagne glass. Funnily, Erika gets embarrassed by this, hence she hurriedly clarifies to him that they can get a hold of blood set aside for transfusions, so they don't have any trouble with daily life. 
The girl thinks that it's not elegant to suck blood from a human. However, Lori tells him that everyone has personal opinions about this. However, he only goes after people on rare occasions. At this, Kauhei asks them if they have to drink blood. Thus, the girl tells him that yes, and even they don't why they crave blood. Lori stands up and goes to the boy's side. He then tells him to be a good supporter of Erika. At this, Erika and Kauhei get confused about what he means. Funnily, Lori teases them for having to see each other's pure forms. At this, they both remember that moment and get flustered. Lori's eagle-like eyes notice their flushed faces. Hence, he teases them for remembering that. This boy is a mystery, everything is intriguing about him, but no one knows who he actually is. Funnily, Erika punches Lori for saying stupid things. She then tells him to shut up. After this, she angrily faces Kauhei and scolds him to not recall those moments. In a swift motion, Lori comes back, and he becomes serious as he tells the boy that as a new member of the student council, there is something he wants him to do. After some time, Lori announced Kauhei as the new lead organizer of the sports festival. At this, all the students become unhappy as they want him to do it. Meanwhile, Kauhei is not looking excited about this position. Hence, Lori says to him that he needs to learn how the student council works, so for it it's best to put him in a role with some responsibilities. Lori then leaves him to handle the students. Kauhei takes a deep breath and confidently introduces himself to the students. He then speaks to the students with honesty. Lori is looking proud to see him handling the situation so well. Kauhei tells the students that since he has transferred to many schools, he has experienced their sports festival. So he likes to implement events that are fun and create moving moments that he has experienced. Thus, he hopes to organize a good event for them with all the students' help. After his speech, Lori proudly claps for him. All the students also start clapping. Later in the evening, Kauhei is making arrangements for the events and working on the ideas for it. Meanwhile, Lori and Erica are looking at him. Erica moves forward to help him but Lori stops her and tells her that pampering people isn't always best for them. Shiro serves tea to Kauhei, however the boy is engrossed in his work. Erica wants to help him but even she knows it's better for him to do all this work. Kauhei doesn't realize how much time he spends working as the night time comes. Hence, he goes to his room to do the rest of the work. After a while, Haruna, Kanade, and Shukasa enter his room to have the tea party but they see him half sleeping on the bed while all the papers are scattered in the room. After some time, Kauhei wakes up and changes his clothes. Meanwhile, the girls clean his room. The boy then informs his friends that he has joined the student council. They all are looking impressed that in a short time, he has gained so much. But they also pity him since he has to do a lot of work. Kauhei didn't think it would be this much work, but now he has so much work to do. However, he is having doubts about whether he is okay for this position or not. At this, Kanada winks at him and tells him to change the order of the words. Thus, she stands up and tells him that he is suitable for this position, and she is sure there are things that can be done because of him. If you have a friend like Kanada, hold them tightly and treasure them, because they are very rare. Kanada then pats the boy and reassures him that he will do just fine. She then tells him about his childhood memory where he tried to do something he really wanted and because of it, he even got injured. It was reckless of him, but what's important is that he has a challenging mind. After some time, Haruna and Kauhei are washing the dishes. There, the girl tells him that if there is anything he wants for help, then she will do it. At this, the boy feels grateful. He says to her that she always cheered him up. However, the girl tells him that it's not true. She then becomes shy as she tells him that one time she couldn't do a back kip circle, and at that time, he cheered her up to do that. Later at night, Haruna is looking at an old letter from Kauhei. They both used to write to each other when Kauhei first left the island. Haruna seems to have feelings for the boy. The next day, Erika enters Lori's office and becomes surprised to see Kauhei sitting with a pile of work. Thus, the boy informs her that he needs to familiarize himself with past sports festivals. Otherwise, he won't know what he can do. Lori is enjoying all this too much. He made the poor boy work too hard. Thus, he tells him to sort out the old material while he is doing this. Surprisingly, Kauhei runs to do that without any objections. Erika smiles at his behavior. Thus, she follows him inside the library and offers to help him. Hence, the girl climbs on the stool to take out the box from the upper drawer. But like a typical anime heroine, she lost her balance and slammed onto the poor boy. Funnily, they both become embarrassed after getting close to each other. They then start watching the pictures of the previous students. 
After seeing the pictures, the girl is wondering if she can make everyone smile like them too, since they have the responsibility to make the school better, so that everyone can have a good time there. The boy realizes that she is saying the right thing, hence he is determined to make this festival good for everyone. After the next few days, Cao Hei is working hard to make the event better. He is handling everything, and even now he has become famous since students love that he is so active in the sports event arrangements. Lori is teasing Erica by telling her that Cao Hei's motto is to have everyone at the school smile. The boy knows Cao Hei is fulfilling Erica's words to make her happy. Funnily, Erica is deeply fallen for him, but she is controlling herself in front of Lori. In the evening, Cao Hei is having lunch in the canteen and working on the event. Haruna and Kanata join him. The boy tells them that he wants to make this event as fun as possible. Thus, he is thinking of new ideas. At this, Kanata gives him her weird ideas. Funnily, the boy completely ignores her and faces Haruna. He then asks her if she has any ideas. Meanwhile, Canada is crying after getting ignored. This girl is a drama queen. Hora gives the boy honey juice to relieve his stress. Kanada jumps at this and excitedly tells the boy that it's his reward for working so hard. At this, Kauhei gets a new idea. After some time, Kauhei shared his idea with students to ask the shopping district to become their sponsor. The students get interested in this and tell him to explain further. Hence, the boy tells them that at one of his previous old schools, they gave out prizes for events and found sponsors from the local shopping district. Thus, the boy wants to invite the people on this island and tells them to sponsor some gifts. This will make things interesting for everyone. However, the students are doubtful about this, since they never did something like this. Shiro is also listening to this from the outside of class. Hence, she decides to help Kauhei. Later in the evening, Kauhei came to the market to follow his idea. Shiro also comes there and tells the boy to let her help him. Hence, they both are visiting the stores and trying to pursue the shopkeepers to sponsor them. After a lot of time, they finally visited all the stores. The boy thanks Shiro for all her help. The girl tells him that her family has always been a prominent family on the island. She has been strictly raised by the old lady Nae-sama as befitting a togi. She has hardly left this island, so she doesn't know much about anything off the island. Thus, the boy promises her that he will give her a tour of the island someday. Shiro gets really happy at this. The day before the event, everyone is helping Kauhei to finish the work. In such a short time, Kauhei has made a sweet spot in everyone's heart. They all completed the work and are celebrating it now. Seeing them all smiling, Erica becomes really happy. Lori and Sei are looking at them from afar. Lori is glad to see his sister happy after a long time. Hence, he feels that he made the right choice by choosing Kauhei. When everything's going right, you know it's just setting up for an epic plot twist. Thus, we see a mysterious woman sitting in a dark room. On the other hand, the gate they all prepared for the event decided to make them all miserable by falling down and breaking into pieces. The sports festival has turned out to be successful. Everyone is enjoying their time there. All the students are playing games and some are having fun with their friends. Only Kiriha is the one who is spending her time alone. After some time, Canada excitedly announces the girls' running competition. She further adds that Kauhei will be the commentator for this game. Hearing this, the boy is shocked since he didn't expect that. Hence, Kanada informs him that the girls want her to do the commentary, but she can't do this. Suddenly, the game starts and all the girls begin running. Funnily, Kanada starts the commentary, and she is just praising Haruna. Hence, Kauhei says to her that her comments are too biased. At this, Kanada tells him that the reason she wasn't doing it, because when she does the commentary, it becomes all about Haruna. That's why she wants the boy to do it and make it fair. Funnily enough, they're bickering like an old married couple, and thanks to the Mick, all the students are treated to a front row seat at the best comedy show of the year. They are laughing at them and enjoying the live show. Meanwhile, Sukasa is feeling embarrassed because of his friend's stupidity. Kauhei snatches the mic from Kanada and starts the commentary. At last, Erika wins the game, and funnily, she goes straight to the boy and beats him for the terrible commentary he did. The whole crowd erupts in laughter as they are enjoying his misery. After that, Lori is teasing a make about the frying pan she always uses. There's no doubt this is the best sports festival the school has ever had. Everyone is so engrossed in the games and having a blast that even the teachers are joining them. The students get so competitive in tug of war that they end up tearing the rope in the middle. The students can't stop laughing, and it's a day nobody will forget anytime soon. Soon lunchtime came. Everyone is setting up their blankets and enjoying lunch.
Surprisingly, Haruna has made a lot of yummy food for her friends. They all become impressed by her. They then start eating the food and no doubt, they all love it. Hence, everyone compliments Haruna for her cooking skills. Even Shiro has made lunch for her brother and her friends. Hence, they are enjoying lunch. Shikasa notices that Haruna has made Kauhei's favorite dish. Thus, Kauhei thanks the girl for it. Funnily, she becomes flustered by his attention. Meanwhile, Kanada teases the boy for trying to tie the knot with her sister. At this, Kauhei gets uneasy, thus he tells her to stop misleading things. After this, Erika tells him that everyone is looking forward to the new water balloon toss event. It appears Haruna, Kanada, and Kauhei came up with this idea. To make the festival more eventful, Kanad informs the other that it was originally Kauhei's idea. He said there should be an event that everyone can enjoy together. Kauhei gives Kanada and Haruna the credit for this idea since they listened to his ideas, and that's how they came up with this fun event. However, the boy isn't going to participate in the event. Thus, he tells everyone to enjoy on his behalf. At that moment, Kiriha was passing by them and couldn't help but overhear their conversation. She then criticizes the boy for being too good. Irate gets angry at this, but the boy tells her that it's fine. After this, Kiriha walks away from there. Erika seems to be upset because of her behavior. After a while, Kiriha is sitting far away from everyone. A black cat comes to her side and starts rubbing against her legs. Suddenly, Kauhei comes there and informs her that the afternoon event is going to start soon. So she should go there. Thus, Kiriha asks the boy if he is talking to her as the lead organizer. At this, the boy says to her that she is just talking with her as a classmate. Kiriha tells him that all the events she signed up for are over, so it won't be a problem if she stays there alone. At this, Kauhei faces her and says to her that she doesn't get her. He thought that she wouldn't take part in the sports festival at all, but she did. Also, the boy points to her, she is looking bored, sitting apart from their classmates. The girl just savagely flips her hair and states to the boy that she is not skipping class based on how entertaining it is. She then looks behind her at the other students. Seeing that, Kauhei asks her if she is waiting for someone. The girl doesn't reply to him and keeps looking at the students, completely absorbed in her thoughts. Kauhei tries to talk to her again, but just as he's about to speak, an announcement blares over the loudspeakers, urgently calling him to the main tent. Kiriha also hears it, therefore she tells him to go. Hence, the boy starts to go, but before that, he calls her and states that this is a festival, so it's better to have as much fun as possible. He then runs away from there. Surprisingly, Kiriha smiles at him, thinking that it's amazing someone can be that meddlesome. Wow, this boy just melted the Ice Queen's heart. The water balloon toss event started. The concept is the same as the ball toss, but there is a slight change in this. The opposite team has to carry the basket and run around. The key to the game is teamwork between the supply team filling water balloons and the attack team throwing balloons. Hence, everyone is enjoying playing this game. On the other hand, a problem has appeared. They don't have enough gifts to give the students since they already gave too much to other students. Thus, Kauhei is thinking about what they should do to solve this problem. Suddenly, he remembers his childhood memory. At that time, little Kanade was upset since she wanted to give a birthday present to Haruna. But they didn't have enough money to buy anything for her. Suddenly, Kauhei gets an idea. Hence, Kanade and Kauhei give Haruna a handwritten coupon in which they write that she can have anything she wants. Haruna gets really happy seeing that. The flashback ends here. Kauhei realizes that he can use this idea to solve this problem. Hence, he excitedly tells his classmates to make vouchers. In this way, they can give vouchers today, and then another day, they will give them the prizes. All the students like this idea. Hence, they all go together to the shopping district and request them for more prizes. Thus, the shop owners happily agree to give them more prizes, since they are having fun at the festival. Everything is going great, the students are enjoying the games. Meanwhile, Kiriha is watching them from a distance. Unfortunately, Haruna gets injured in the game. Hence, she becomes sad. Because she was looking forward to running with Kauhei, now they have to find another person to fill her place. Thus, Kauhei looks around and notices Kiriha. Hence, he goes to her and asks her if she can participate in the three-legged race. Kiriha asks him why she has to do it. At this, Haruna tells her that she wants her to do it. She then tries to stand up but gets stumbled because of the injury. Thankfully, her friends hold her and give her support. Kauhei tells her to not worry about this. However, Haruna shakes her head and tells the girl that she is unbeatable as she gives her best. 
Looks like someone's trying to butter up to get their work done. All the students are looking at Kiriha with hopeful eyes. Thus, the girl agrees to participate, but she already warns the boy that she won't be responsible for the outcome of it. After some time, Haruna braided Kiriha's hair with practice skill. As she works, she can't help but compliment Kiriha on how silky and smooth her hair is. With a genuine smile, Haruna confesses that she always wanted to talk to her. She thinks they can be good friends. Kiriha feels uncomfortable by this since she is not habitual of this kind of treatment. After some time, the game starts. Everyone is working hard to win the game. Kiriha and Kauhei are working great as a team. Surprisingly for the game, Kiriha changes her outfit and wears a cute cat outfit. Everyone is amazed by her beauty and starts cheering for her. Meanwhile, Kauhei is stunned to see her. Funnily, after a long time, Erika comes out of the changing room wearing a Nupio costume. She gets angry at her brother since she knows it's his doing. Funnily, Erika is having difficulty in managing her balance. Hence, she falls to the ground like a sack, whereas Kauhei holds Kiriya's hand and starts running. The girl seems to be mesmerized by him as she keeps staring at him. After a long time, all the events ended. Everyone had a blast today. Thus, they are now excited for next year's event. As expected, Kiriha and Kauhei won the game. However, the girl leaves them to have fun and goes from there. Lori praises Kauhei for the great work he did. Surprisingly, the boy gives Kauhei a key as a reward for all the hard work he did. Kauhei gets confused about the key. Hence, Lori gets close to him and sensually says to him that it's his room key. Funnily, Erika pushes him away from Kauhei. She then tells Kauhei that it's a key to the governing student's room. Kauhei feels overwhelmed by all the love he is getting. Everyone loves him for his honesty and good nature. On the other hand, Kiriha is lying on the soft green grass in the forest, with the black cat sitting contentedly beside her. Kauhei approaches Haruna, who is posting a community service notice on the school board. Curiously, he asks her what she's doing. At this, Aruna shows him the notice and then inquires if the student council will be supporting them this year. Kauhei looks puzzled since he doesn't know anything about it. On the other hand, Lori excitedly informs Sei and Erika that all the preparations are complete and now they just have to take action. Seems like Lori doesn't inform Kauhei about this, hence the boy seems irritated by this. However, he is still ready to help out. Haruna shakes her head as she reassures him that he doesn't have to worry about this. But our boy is persistent, hence he says to her that if the entire student council is helping out, then he can't just sit and watch. The girl seems happy to see him being responsible, hence she gives the boy her sweetest smile and thanks him for the help. Meanwhile, Kauhei notices the stack of pamphlets in Haruna's bag and asks if she's planning to put them up by herself. He then remembers that other students are supposed to help with this task. Thus he her asks about them. Funnily, Haruna, blushing slightly, admits that she is not very good at rock-paper-scissors. Hence she loses in the game and now she has to do this job. Kauhei remembers that Haruna has always been terrible at rock-paper-scissors. Hence without thinking, he blurts out that she has always been awful at this. However, in an instant he realized his mistake. Thus, he immediately turns red and stammers an apology. Haruna gets amused by his reaction and decides to tease him. Therefore, she asks him why he is apologizing. It's not like he said anything she didn't already know. Kauhei now becomes thoroughly embarrassed. Hence, he stutters another apology. At this rate, the boy might win an award for the most apologetic member. Haruna laughs at his cuteness. The boy changes the topic and asks her if she is hungry. At this, Haruna becomes shy. Thus, Kauhei tells her that they both should complete this work and then go eat the chef's special misa ramen. Haruna likes this idea, therefore she happily says yes. After this, the boy picks up the bag and then they both go upstairs to post all the pamphlets. Funnily, Canada has been watching them secretly. She knows that her sister loves Kauhei. However, she doesn't know whether the boy feels the same about her sister or not. Later at night, Haruna is worried about the boy. Meanwhile, Kauhei is lying in his room and thinking about the time he left the island. Six years ago, he said goodbye to little Haruna and informed her that because of his father's job, they had to move from the island. Thus, the girl gently smiles at him and tells him that it's not a goodbye, because even if they live far apart, they still will be friends. Haruna tells him that she will write letters to him and he will always be her friend. At that time, Kauhei felt that he shouldn't think about the past, since migratory birds don't make friends, but Haruna changed his mind since she did send him letters just like she promised. 
She used to send him many letters at that time. Cao Hei used to happily read them and feels happy about it. Now after all these years he has opened the letters and is feeling nostalgic as he is reading them. Funnily, Canada is peeking in from his balcony door. She becomes happy to see that the boy is still reading her sister's old letters. Hence, she becomes really happy as she feels that Cao Hei also loves her sister. Meanwhile, Cao Hei is lost in thought. Suddenly he notices a moment on his balcony. Thus he realizes that it must be noisy Canada. Funnily, he slowly goes there and abruptly pulls back the curtains from the window. Canada jumped from the fright as she didn't expect him to see her. She gotta stop sneaking up on people. One of these days she is going to give herself a heart attack. Cao Hei firmly asks Canada what she's doing there. After a while, Haruna gets a call from Cao Hei. Hence the boy tells her to come outside. Funnily, Cao Hei is holding Canada like she is a mischievous cat who always makes trouble. He tells Canada that his guardian has come to pick her up. Funnily, Canada knows she is in trouble. Hence, she nervously gives her sister her sweetest smile to make her loosen up. But her trick is not working today, since Aruna is still tense. She can't believe that her sister was in Kauhei's room this late. The boy states that her sister was trespassing in his room and he isn't going to take this as a joke. Funnily, Kanata tries to save herself as she gives the boy her puppy eyes. She innocently states that she wasn't trespassing, she was only wondering what he usually does. However, none of them are buying her excuse. Hence, she hurriedly runs from there, making excuses that she has to water her cactus. Girl knows when to run to save her life. Haruna then says sorry to the boy on behalf of his sister. After that, she goes from there. The next day, Kauhei and Kanata are having lunch in the canteen. The boy asks her if has repented for what she did last night. At this, Kanata gives him a big smile and tells him that she did. After this, as an apology, she gives him a shiitake mushroom. Funnily, the boy knows her well enough and he figures out that she doesn't like shiitake mushrooms, that's why she is giving him. She is making good use of her brain. Haruna comes there and sees them. She then turns to sit somewhere else to give them privacy. Amusingly, she thinks that Canada likes Kauhei. That's why, as a supporting sister, she wants her to get the boy. However, Canada already notices her there, hence she calls her to sit with them. But Haruna tells them that she is fine and she is going to go sit somewhere else. Canada doesn't want this, Thus, she goes to her and pushes her to their table. Funnily, she also wants to set her up with the boy. Hence, she whispers to her to not worry. She will do anything if it's for her. Haruna gets confused as she doesn't understand what she means. Meanwhile, Canada picks up her plates and mischievously tells them that she won't be the third wheel between them, so they should enjoy lunch together. She then goes from there. Kauhei gets confused by her strange behavior. Meanwhile, Haruna gets embarrassed. Later that night, Tsukasa, Haruna, Kanada, and Kauhei are having a tea party in his room. Funnily, Kanada is trying to set Haruna with Kauhei, hence she even hints to them to get married. At this, Kauhei and Haruna get embarrassed and ask her what she's doing. Meanwhile, Tsukasa asks them if they are getting married. Funnily, Kanada becomes angry at him for being the third wheel, hence she scolds the boy and gives him disciplinary stickers to shut him up. The next day, Kauhei asks Haruna as she also thinks that Canada has been acting strange for the last few days. The girl gets embarrassed as she agrees with him. Thus, the boy asks her if she knows the reason behind it. At this, Haruna gets lost in thought as she guesses that it might be possible her sister is trying to set her up with Kauhei. Suddenly, they hear an announcement about the event the student council is hosting during this Keep Things Tidy month is starting. Thus, they both look outside the window and notice that Lori is making the announcement while the other students are working on something. Haruna becomes tense as she tells the boy that she has to go down there. Kauhei asks her about what's happening. Hence, the girl informs him that today, they are publicizing the new uniform for those who are part of the cleaning committee. The girl then hurriedly runs from there. Kauhei also runs behind her to go with her. After a while, all the students gather outside. Lori is introducing the girls who will be helping in cleaning the surroundings. Funnily, he made the girls wear cute cleaning outfits so that the boys get attracted to them and in this way, they would also help them in cleaning. Kauhei doesn't like this idea much and feels that if he had known about this earlier, then he would have objected. Funnily, Canada pushes him to go with her and take pictures with Haruna. However, Haruna is getting embarrassed by all this, whereas, Kanada tells her that she will do anything to see her happy. Haruna gets really upset at this and asks her why she is saying things like this. 
She feels that Canada is doing all this because she feels bad that Haruna got in the accident and lost all her memory. Hence, Haruna's emotions burst as she tells her sister that she doesn't like it when she behaves this way. After this, she runs away from there while crying. After a while, Kauhei and Kanade are sitting together in the canteen. The girl is worried for her sister. She confesses to Kauhei that she thought what was between him and Haruna was mutual. At this, the boy informs her that there is nothing between him and Haruna, not in the past and not even now. Haruna comes to meet Kauhei, but after seeing Kanada there, she goes somewhere else. Kanada becomes really upset by this and feels bad that it is all her fault. She tells the boy that Haruna used to be very weak when she was little and kept going back and forth between the hospital and home. She had bone marrow transplants done. Hence, their mother told Kanada that as a big sister, she had to take care of Haruna. One day, because of the accident, Haruna lost her one year's memory, and that year was the one she spent with Kauhei. That's why the letter Haruna used to send the boy came to an end. Since she doesn't remember about him, Canada feels guilty and thinks that it's her fault that she can't keep her sister safe. That's why now she wanted her to be happy. Kauhei understands that's the reason. Canada keeps Haruna above herself. Hence, the boy says to Kanada that he understands her feelings, but he is sure this is not what Haruna wants. Later that night, Kauhei and Haruna go shopping together. After that, they went to a restaurant to have tea. There, the boy tells her about what Kanada feels. Thus, he tells the girl to forgive her sister. However, Haruna gets really upset as she tells him that it's not about forgiving her. After her accident, Kanada started to care and prioritize her ahead of herself. But Haruna didn't like that. Surprisingly, Haruna thinks that Kanada used to like Kauhei. However, she blamed herself for the accident, and that's why she is hiding her true feelings. Haruna wants her to be happy, because if Kanada won't be happy, then Haruna can't let herself be happy. Kauhei understands her situation, hence he tells the girl that they should go now and tells all this to Kanada, since this matter won't be solved until they reveal their true feelings. Thus, after some time, Kanada comes to meet Haruna. The girl truthfully tells her feelings to Kanand and reveals that she used to be jealous of her in her childhood. She could go to school and do other things, but Haruna wasn't able to do all this because of her weakness. However, when Haruna started to go out and make friends with others, she started to have fun. But then the accident happened. Hence, the girl thinks that it happened because she stopped listening to Kanada and started hating her. However, Haruna then realizes that she was wrong about Kanada. Hence, she tells Canada that the accident was not her fault. That's why she should stop blaming herself. Haruna wants Canada to start thinking about herself. Surprisingly, Canada also bursts out and lets out her feelings. She tells her sister that it was her fault because she used to think that Canada was annoying. Her parents used to be completely occupied with taking care of Haruna and Canada was always alone. Hence, she used to hate Haruna for taking all of their parents' love. Canandi feels that she was bad because she didn't care for her sister. And when that accident happened, Canada realized her mistake and swore to protect her. Thus, Canada wants to repent for all the bad things she has done to Haruna. She wants to make her happy. However, Haruna doesn't want her to sacrifice herself for this. She also wants her to be happy. They both realize that they want the same thing for each other. Hence, they both resolve their differences and tightly hug each other. Kauhei gets happy to see them together. After this, he gives Haruna her old letters and tells her to read them. The boy informs them that Haruna sent this letter after she lost her memory. She was asking him to exchange the letters like they used to do before. But the boy feels it's not right since she doesn't remember him. The boy feels that she is trying to make new memories with an honest and truthful heart. Thus, he tells the girls that they can now make new memories since he is back now. Kanad informs him that he has fulfilled the promise that they had made in the past. It appears they all three prayed for him to come back to the island so that they all could play together again. One more time, they are making a new promise to continue to make many fun memories on the island together. A boy proposed to Erica, but she turned him down. The girl has a rule that loving or dating someone is something solely between humans, and because of it, she won't be with anyone. Erica feels sad about this since she does not want to have a relationship. She is lost in thought when she hears Kauhei call her, hence her thoughts break as she looks at him. The boy gets close to her and takes out the ladybug from her hair. Erica finds the bug cute, but the boy thinks that there is nothing special about it. At this, Erica tells him that it's beautiful because it's ordinary. The bug then flies from there. Erica looks at the sky and feels happy that he is free to fly wherever he wants to. 
Somehow, she can connect with the ladybug, since she also wants to be free and live as an ordinary person. On the other hand, Lori is watching them from the rooftop and seems like the boy is up to something. After some time, Say and Cow are working in Lori's office, where he is just fanning himself and annoying them. He teases them since other students are enjoying their Sunday, meanwhile, they have to work. Kauhei angrily points out to him that they would have been also doing the same, if not he just suddenly told them to turn the first pool day into an event. The boy is frustrated because for the past few days, they have been busy organizing the event and searching for the idea, and now they even have to work on a Sunday. Funnily, Lord just ignores him, and then suddenly he reads a quote about love. He then states that this is the magazine Erica reads. Lori asks Kauhei if he wants to know his compatibility with Erica. Kauhei blushes and says no, but Lori knows he's just embarrassed. So Lori starts reading Erica's horoscope anyway. Kauhei, despite his denial, leans in closer to listen. For someone who is not interested, it sure is getting too close to hear. Lori reveals Erica's birth date and horoscope. Hearing this, Kauhei jumps up from his seat, because today is Erica's birthday. Hence, he tells the boy that they should do the preparations and celebrate her birthday. However, Lori informs him that sadly, their family doesn't celebrate these things since they are immortal. They think that they are never going to die, so what's there to celebrate about living another year? Lori tells Cow Hay that he doesn't think Erica cares that today is her birthday. Lori knows the boy will do something to celebrate his sister's birthday and make her happy. This is what he wants, hence he gives the boy a chance to leave the work and go meet with Erica. Kauhei hurriedly runs from there to prepare for the girl's birthday. Erica sees him running off, so she asks Lori where Kauhei went. The boy just tells her that Kauhei goes out to buy a toilet brush. On the other hand, Erica and Kauhei are working on the idea for the event. The girl notices that Kauhei is working too hard so that everyone can have fun. Suddenly, a delivery boy comes there with the sushi delivery. Thus, Kauhei goes there to pick up. Funnily, Shukasa has come there to deliver the gift to Kauhei. Hence, the boy takes the gift from him. He then gives the girl to Erica and tells her to open it. Erica carefully opens the gift and sees flowers in it. The boy happily wishes her a happy birthday. He then tells her that he went earlier in the market to buy flowers for her, but the woman informs him that she will prepare the flower in the evening. Luckily, Kauhei sees Shukasa in the market. Thus, he tells him to bring the flower in the evening. Erica is silently watching the flowers all the time. Kauhei gets worried and asks her if she doesn't like them. At this, the girl shakes her head and states that this is the first time she has received something like this. Hence, she becomes a little emotional, because today the boy makes her feel like an ordinary girl. Thus, she wipes her tears and thanks the boy for the thoughtful gift. She becomes really happy after breathing in the heavenly smell of the flowers. They both then get back to work. Later at night, Erica is in her room. She happily puts the flowers on the table. She then recalls the boy telling her happy birthday and this makes her smile. Suddenly, her heart starts thumping painfully. Thus, she hugs herself on the bed as she feels the intense pain. After a few painful moments, she feels better again. Hence, she is breathing heavily. She doesn't understand why this happened to her. After a few days, the pool opening day comes. All the girls are in the changing room and they are changing into swimming outfits. Surprisingly, even Kiriha is joining them. After a while, the girls' swimming race starts. Meanwhile, the boys are crying over the fact that Sister Amake is not wearing a swimsuit today. On the other hand, Kauhei is trying to ignore looking at Erika, since she is looking too good in the swimsuit. While on the other hand, Lori is shamelessly showing his body to the girls. Funnily, Erika pushes him into the water for being shameless. She then angrily sits beside Kauhei and complains about her brother. Kauhei hesitantly smiles at her and says to her that Lori is making the event entertaining in many ways. Haruna and Kanita come to meet them. Haruna then gives tea as a gift to Erika. Kanada asks him why they are not swimming in the pool. At this, Erika informs her that they are organizing this event and as the stage crew, they have to make sure everything goes smoothly. Kanada and Haruna go from there as Kanada is joining the next game. Surprisingly, Erika has brought lunch for the boy. Hence, Kauhei eats the sandwich. No doubt he really likes them, hence he compliments the girl on it. They both then enjoy lunch. After a while, Kanada announces the next event. In this game, the girls have to protect their hats for five minutes from the boys Canada has sent into the pool. The winner will get the tickets for the free lunch. Thus, the game starts and the boys easily snatch the hats from the girls and now only Kiriha and Shiro have left. 
Hence, all the boys jump on her to get the hat. But the girl smartly moves away from there and keeps herself safe. The other boys are encircling Shiro to get the hat. Funnily, Sai almost faints seeing his sister in between the boys. Whereas, Shiro is scared of the boys. Hence, she is cutely splashing water on them to not go near her. Funnily, the boys can't seem to attack a cute girl like her, so they all leave her alone. Hence, Kanada announces Kiriha and Shiro as the winners. After that, all the students throw sister Amake and their teacher in the pool to get their revenge. I wish we all could do the same to our beloved teachers. After some time, the event ended. Kauhei and Erika are cleaning the area. The girl is annoyed at her brother for acting childish sometimes. However, the boy says to her that Lori is president because he is like that and everyone loves his playfulness. They then laugh at Lori and continue to clean. Kirihead is passing from there but she stops after seeing them. The other girls also come there and see Erika and Kauhei together. They think that they both look good together. Hearing this, Hiryo walks away from there. It seems like she doesn't like the idea of them being partners. After some time, Erika is watching the sunset. Kauhei comes to her side and tells her to race in the pool. Hence, they both jump in the pool, and in the middle, they make eye contact. Thus, they smile at each other. The chemistry between them is too obvious. But they don't seem to notice it yet. After a while, Erika wins the race. She then takes Kauhei's hand to bring him out of the pool. However, her feet slip, and they both get close to each other. Suddenly, Erika feels the same pain in her heart. Hence, she moves away from the boy. She then tries to go away from there, but she loses her balance. Hence, Kauhei grabs her shoulder to help her. However, the girl's heart painfully beats again after the boy touches her. Thus, she moves away from him. She then runs away from there. Meanwhile, Kauhei becomes worried for her. Erika rushes to her bed and collapses onto it. Her breathing is labored as she is craving blood. It's clear that the boy's presence is having an effect on her, awakening her vampire side. Erika bolted upright, her heart pounding from the disturbing dream where she was drinking blood from Kauhei. As reality settled in, she glanced around at the mess she had made earlier. The messy scene reminded her that the pain had been so intense she had fallen asleep in the midst of it all. After a while, a girl comes out of the church. Suddenly she looks up at the church building and sees a girl standing there wearing a black cape. Thus, she screams in fright. Sister Emake is in the church and she hears the girls screaming. Hence, she hurriedly comes outside and sees her sitting on the ground with a scared face. She asks the girl about what happened. At this, the girl points toward the church building. Hence, Sister Emake glances in that direction, but strangely, there is no one there. The next day, Erica is looking outside the classroom. Suddenly, she hears a girl telling her friends that a girl from class 4 saw a vampire's last light at the chapel. However, her friend doesn't believe this and thinks that this is just a rumor. Erica becomes tense after hearing this. This news has spread like fire. Everyone in the school is talking about it and wondering if the vampires are real or not. Later that day, Kauhei, Shiro, Erika, and Sei are in Lori's office. They know that everyone is talking about vampires. Funnily, Lori jokes about it and states that if the vampires are really here then he would like to see one. He then glances into the mirror and sees his own reflection in it. Amusingly, he acts dramatically shocked like he just saw a vampire. In some ways, it's true since he is a vampire himself. This boy has a talent for humor. In seconds, he turned a serious situation into a funny one. Say is serious about this matter. Because even if the rumor is trivial, the students are still concerned about it. However, Lori is not taking it seriously as he tells Say to at least get along with his joke. Since only he can pull that vampire joke, Sai decides to not argue with him, because it will be no use. Kauhei then asks Lori if he was the one whom the girl saw. Thus, the boy states that he is not foolish enough to be seen like that. However, he thinks that maybe it was Erika. At this, the girl gets angry and firmly tells him no. Shiro gets confused by her sudden outbursts. Hence, she asks her if something is wrong with her. The girl gets defensive and tells him that she has nothing to do with this, so Lori can keep his crazy comments to himself. Kauhei asks them if it's not either of them, then are there other vampires on the island? At this, Erika and Lori become concerned. The boy quickly masks his emotions and replies in a cryptic tone that there are vampires, but there aren't any vampires either. Kauhei becomes confused by his answer, hence he asks him what he means by this. Sai decides to join the chat, hence he tells them that whether there are vampires or not, they have to uncover the truth behind it, because the rumors are spreading too much. Lori is still using his playful personality to lighten the mood. 
He salutes Sei and states that they will start patrols tonight. Sai orders Shiro to stay in her room and not come with them. The girl seems upset about this but she agrees to do that. Whereas, Erika is looking tense as she is lost in her thoughts. Kao Hei is watching her carefully and notices her tense mood. After some time, Erika and Kao Hei are walking outside. They hear students talking about vampires. The girl feels stressed hearing others saying bad things about them. Lori comes to her side and tells her that she is still naive to stress over things like this. Erika is getting irritated with him. Hence, she tells him that it's strange he is not stressing over this. Surprisingly, the boy becomes serious as she tells his sister that if they all uncover their truth, then their stress will end. The boy knows this will happen. That's why he tells his sister that she should always be prepared for it. He then goes from there. Meanwhile, Erika mumbles that she is prepared for it, but she doesn't think people will take that positively. After some time, they enter the dormitory and see Kaneda holding something. She is arguing with her sister that she will protect everyone. Kauhei comes forward and asks Kaneda what she's doing. At this, Haruna worriedly tells the boy to stop her sister because she wants to go on a patrol. Kanade gets angry as she tells them that if vampires do anything to her beloved sister, then Sue won't forgive them. Oh, isn't she the cutest? On a serious note, she should see her size before acting like an angry bear. Haruna tries to stop her from doing anything harmful. She feels that vampires are dangerous and scary. Therefore, she requests Kao Hei to stop her sister from doing something stupid. Erika gets sad that they think like that about vampires. Meanwhile, Kanada proudly shows the boy the Almighty Cross and tells him that she is this, so there's nothing to be scared about. She even put garlic in it to be extra safe, only if she knows there are two vampires in the room. Erika is getting more upset by this, whereas Lori comes forward and praises her for being well prepared. Funnily, he then puts the garlic on her neck and encourages her to wear it to beat the vampires. Kanada is about to die from the smell of garlic. Suddenly, sister and mate comes there and angrily scolds them for being out of their rooms. She then notices Kanada's strange appearance. Hence, she scolds her for it. Sister and mate tells them that vampires only exist in fiction and they are nothing more than figments of people's imaginations. However, she informs them that it's true a stranger has been roaming around their school recently. So until the case is solved, she tells them that they are not allowed to be out at night. At this, Lori silently mutters that they can't do this. He then tells everyone to go to their rooms, just like Sister Emake said. He then calls her by the nickname he gave her. Funnily, this makes Emake blush. However, she tries to be strict and scolds him to not call her by the nickname. But as a mischievous person, Lori continues to tease her. Meanwhile, Haruna, Tsukasa, and Kanata go to their room. Lori signals Erika and Kauhei that their night patrol plan is on. After some time, Kauhei and Erika are patrolling the school grounds. Suddenly, Erika confesses that she feels bad lying to their friends. She feels like she is betraying everyone. The boy notices her sad expression. Hence, he reassures her that he doesn't think like this. Because everyone has a secret they can't tell others. The boy doesn't think that a person like her who cares so much about school is betraying everyone. Erika smiles at him, but after looking at him, she feels a sudden craving of blood. Hence, she feels bad thinking like that for him. After a while, they meet Sei and Lori. Kauhei informs them that they didn't see anything suspicious. It appears Lori and Sei also didn't find anything. Suddenly, they feel a strange energy around them. Hence, they look up and see a black shadow on the building. They realize that the rumors were true. Thus, Erika jumps on the rooftop and asks the person who he is. Surprisingly, the girl's cloak is removed from her face and they all become shocked to see that it's Kiriha. Erika recovers from the shock and asks the girl what's the meaning of this. At this, Kiriha states that she thought the vampire might show herself if she caused some commotion. It appears the girl is looking for her master, but after not finding her, she goes from there. Hence, they all, both girls are in the forest. Unfortunately, Kiriha escapes from there. Meanwhile, Erika accidentally appears in front of Haruna with her red vampire eyes. Haruna faints from the shock of it. Surprisingly, in the past, Erika protected Haruna from the accident. But in the process, Haruna saw her vampire eyes. So to keep their secret safe, Erika removes Haruna's one-year memory. Kauhei and Lori come there and realize that Haruna saw Erika. After some time, Lori tells Eric that she has to remove Haruna's memory. Because ordinary people can't know about them, since it is dangerous for them, Erika doesn't want to do this, but she doesn't have much choice. Hence, she goes inside the room and stands in front of Haruna. 
Kauhei realizes her intentions. Thus, he tries to make her understand that Haruna will keep their secret, and she will accept her for what she is. Hence, she has to put some faith in her. At this, Erika reveals that this won't be the first time she is removing her memory. She then tells the boy about the accident. The boy realizes that this is why Haruna doesn't remember him. Erika tells the boy that from the earlier shock, Haruna will remember the memories she took from her. Kauhei gets angry at this and tells her that she can't do this to her friend. He tries to make her understand that Haruna will accept it all even if she finds out about everything. Erika suddenly yells out that she is sacred because it will be over if it becomes public. Hence, she gets close to the girl to remove her memory. But surprisingly, Haruna wakes up and thanks her for saving her. Erika gets emotional since this is what she wants. She doesn't want to deceive her friends anymore. Hence, she brings back Haruna's memory. The girl now gets back her memory and remembers all the time she has spent with Kauhei. Both girls become emotional as they hug each other. On the other hand, Sai has come to meet a mysterious girl. Kiriha wakes up in the morning to find herself on a cliff. Beside her, a black cat is silently watching her. On the other hand, Erika drinks blood to satisfy her craving. She then gets ready for school. After some time, Kauhei and Erika are going to school together. The girl asks him if they find Kiriha. Hence, Kauhei informs her that they haven't found her yet. Also, Kiriha has been absent from school since that day. The boy then informs Erika that Haruna has also been absent from school. It appears Haruna's body can't handle the shock of her memories coming back. Erika feels sad about this. Kauhei tells the girl that if she is fine that Haruna will explain the situation to Kanata. At this, the girl replies that she can't stop Haruna from telling her sister. However, she is just worried that her relationship with Kanata will get destroyed because of it. In the next moment, Kanata and Haruna appear in front of them. Kanata is looking serious as she tells Erika that she has heard everything from Haruna. They all go to a private area to talk. There, Kanata runs towards Erika and tightly hugs her. Erika and Kauhei didn't expect her to behave like this. Hence, they both become shocked. Surprisingly, Kanata thanks Erika for saving Haruna from that accident. Kanata even starts crying as she feels overwhelmed by her emotions. Erika feels satisfied after hearing this. She was very stressed about how Kanata would behave. But now that Erika sees that Kanata still loves her like before, she becomes really happy. However, she still has some doubts. Hence, she tells the girl that she is not a human. At this, Kanata says to her that she doesn't care about this, because she is still her precious friend. Erika's heart fills with love, as she feels really happy. Surprisingly, Kiriha suddenly comes there. Kauhei and Erika are surprised to see her. Meanwhile, Kanata and Haruna happily say good morning to her. However, Kiriha ignores them and goes from there. Kauhei remembers that Erika calls Kiriha a dependent. Hence, he is curious about this and wants to know what dependents are. After some time, Lori and Sei are waiting for Kiriha. Hence, the girl comes there and passes by them. Meanwhile, Lori asks her if she is searching for her master. Not so surprisingly, Kiriha as usual ignores them and walks away from there. This girl is made from ice, I can bet. Even fire can't melt her. Sai asks Lori if he thinks the girl is dependent and if it's true then her master would be. In the midway the boy stops talking. However, it seems like Lori knows whom he is talking about. Hence, he comments that the girl has a terrible taste as always. After some time, Erika is in Lori's office. She also thinks that Kiriha's master is that mystery girl. Hence, she asks her brother if he knows anything about it. At this, the boy flatly replies that he doesn't know. Funnily, he then jokes that he should ask the girl if the beautiful Kiriha is her dependent. Erika is looking unimpressed by this. Thus, the boy says to her that she also knows he can't have a conversation like this with her. After this, he asks Erika whether she wants to meet her or not, especially if it's regarding dependence. Surprisingly, Erika becomes nervous after hearing this. Hence, she hurriedly says no to him and tells him that it's not like that. Shrio then comes there to give them tea, but Sai tells her that this is something she needs to hear, so she should go from there. However, Shiro doesn't want to go. Hence, she tells her brother that she is part of the Toggy family. So this does concern her. Sai coldly tells her to go and warm the tea, Shiro knows she can't win against her brother, hence she goes from there. After this, Lori tells Erika to stay out of this matter. Erika doesn't like this, hence she angrily stands up to argue with him. But the boy shut her up by reminding the promise she had made. At this, Erika gets silent. Suddenly, Kauhei comes there and sits on the table. 
He informs them that he is late because of Shikasa. Thus, he asks them about what they discussed. However, no one replies, hence he asks them if something happened. At this, Erika smiles at him and tries to cover up the issue. She lies to him that they are fighting like they usually do, so he doesn't have to worry. Funnily, Lori gives punishment to the boy for arriving late. Thus, he makes him the lead organizer of the cultural festival. Kauhei doesn't seem to be happy about this. Meanwhile, Lori tells Erika that he is making her lead organizer for this event too. He then gives them the reference material to work on. Later at night, Kanada, Haruna, Tsukasa, Erika, and Shiro are in Kauhei's room. They all are having their usual tea party. There, they all get to know about Kauhei and Erika being the lead organizer for the event. Thus, Kanada informs them that this event is after the vacation, so they should start preparing for it. Erika and Kauhei tell them that this work is hard for them, preparing for the events and coming up with new ideas is lots of work. Like a generous person, Canada happily offers to them. She tells them that they all will help them with anything they want. They all then start working on the ideas for the event. After a while, all the girls head to their rooms, while Shikis advises Kauhei not to hold on to his feelings for too long. He explains that being overly considerate is not the same as being kind. The next day, Kiriha is peacefully reading a book in the park. After some time, Sei comes to her and tells her that he wants her to meet someone. Surprisingly, the girl follows him without a question. I can bet. There's something fishy going on here. Later that day, Erika and Kauhei came to the market to buy supplies. Hence, they both are trying to gather sponsors for the festival. Therefore, they ask the town shopkeeper if they can give them prizes for their event. All the people happily got ready to help them, since they all really enjoyed the sports festival. Fast forward to the night, Kauhei and Erika are sitting on the beach. They are discussing the event. It appears they want to make the event really enjoyable for everyone, since this will be the last event for Kanada and Lori. Kauhei is staring at the girl while she is drinking juice. Hence, the girl notices that he is not drinking his drink. Thus, she tells him to drink it. Kauhei gulps the whole drink in one go. He then faces the girl and tells her that there is something he wants her to tell him. At this, Erika asks him what he wants to know. Surprisingly, Kauhei asks her what dependents are. The girl becomes shocked by his unexpected question. Meanwhile, Kauhei says to her that she has been distracted by something ever since she saw Kiriha that night. Thus, the boy wants her to not bear this alone and share it with him. Erika seems upset as she tells him that she knows she has to tell him about this at some point. Suddenly the rain starts there. The girl informs Kauhei that dependents are those who have formed a contract with a vampire. She then explains that dependents are born from drinking a vampire's blood. And just like vampires, they don't age, nor do they die. They also have astounding physical abilities. Though at times they go into long sleep against their will, as though their batteries had run out. Other than that, they are no different from any human. More importantly, when a master-dependent relationship is formed through a contact, the master's orders to the dependent become absolute. Surprisingly, Erika reveals that Kiriha's master is possibly Lori and her mother. Kiriha has come with Sei to meet her master. Surprisingly, Kiriha slaps the woman. She then tells her that she is becoming crazy after every meeting. Kaya looks amused by her reaction. Meanwhile, Kiriha says to her that she is putting an end to their game. Thus, she starts to walk away from there. However, Kaya orders her to stop and show her face. Surprisingly, Kiriha stops in the mid-step and then turns to keep Kaya. It seems like Kaya is controlling Kiriha and the poor girl is following her orders like a puppet. It appears, Erika refuses to obey Kaya and denies being her puppet. This is why Kaya hates her. Erika reveals to the boy that she made a promise with her mother as a condition for entering Shuchikin Academy. The promise was that by the time she graduates, she must make a dependent, and if she doesn't, then she will be forced to go back to their house and live there forever, just like when she was a child. Kauhei becomes shocked at this. Meanwhile, Erika reveals that her mother always hated her for not behaving like a proper vampire. That's why she used to lock him in the house. Kauhei gets angry at this. Hence, the girl tries to reassure him by saying that she still has time for her graduation. Therefore, she may find a way out without having to take a dependent. Thus, she tells the boy to not worry about this. Kauhei is still upset about this. Surprisingly, he then asks her that if it comes to that, then he will become her dependent. Erika's eyes widened in shock. She gets angry at him for saying such a ridiculous thing. Hence, she tries to make him understand that being a dependent means he will no longer be human. 
The girl doesn't want him to do this, since she knows being a dependent means he has to obey her and Erica will crave his blood. Hence, she will suck blood from him as she pleases. But Erica doesn't want to do all this to him, hence she refuses his offer. Surprisingly, she confesses that she wants to live as a human. The boy is shocked by this. Meanwhile, Erica hugs herself protectively and states that if she takes a dependent, then she is afraid that she will no longer be herself, hence she is scared about this. After a while, Erica stands up and tells the boy that she will never drink blood from a human, and neither will she take a dependent, even if that makes her unvampiric, because she doesn't want to lose the bond with her friends. In the evening, Laurie is sitting in a chapel. He seems to be deep in his thoughts. Sister Amate comes there and sees him. Thus, she tells him that it's really rare for him to be there. At this, the boy replies that he also wants to be alone to think. Sister Amate tells him to go to his room since it's not safe to be outside. Lori says to her that the vampire case has been solved, so they don't have to worry about it now. He then calls her Shizuko-chan. Amusingly, Amake starts blushing at this. She then tells him to stop calling her that. Lori looks at her face and sees her younger self. He then tells her that what vampires desire most is the blood of the person they love. After saying this, Lori leaves from there. On the other hand, Kauhei walks with Erika to her dormitory. They then have a sweet moment. After that, they promise to make the cultural festival a success. Kauhei then goes from there. Whereas, Erika again starts feeling that pain again. After a while, she drinks all the blood in her room. But even after drinking all of it, she still wants Kauhei's blood. Lori's office is bustling with activity as a long line of students eagerly wait to request their preferred events for the upcoming cultural festival. Each student is being sent in by Kauhei, who is managing the flow efficiently. Thus, inside the office, Erika is carefully reviewing each request and doing her best to accommodate everyone's wishes. Summer break is just around the corner, that's why everyone wants to finalize their plans this week. Apparently, the cultural festival is the highlight of their school year. Hence, Lori has entrusted Kauhei with the important task of ensuring the event is enjoyable for everyone. Kauhei is determined to make this year's festival the best. Therefore, the boy and Erika are putting their heart and soul into the preparations ensuring that every idea is heard and considered. After a long day of working, they finally finished all the work. Funnily, Lori is complaining about the summer heat and the hard work for the festival, even though all he did was drink tea while sitting in the coolest place in the room. The boy tries to have fun, thus he tells everyone that they should have a party and relax a bit. However, like a buzzkill, Erica refuses his offer and tells him to go party alone. Hence, she packs her things and then cowhay and she goes from there. Dude is following her like a lost puppy. Erica is still thinking about work, thus she is telling the boy what they should do for the festival. Kauhei tells her that she shouldn't work too hard, otherwise she might make herself sick. However, the girl says to him that she is fine. She is getting the energy to work just by imagining everyone enjoying themselves in the festival. Kauhei realizes that the girl really cares about everyone. Apparently, Erika feels most connected with everyone when she is working for the school's sake. The girl feels as though she is living as a human like everyone else, and this feeling makes her really happy. Erika then asks the boy if he has come up with the idea for the after party. It appears the after party is the big event that wraps up the cultural festival. Thus, Erika is putting this responsibility on the boy to make a great after party for everyone that they will remember forever. Kauhei feels overwhelmed by the responsibilities, yet he is still trying his best to fulfill them. Erica then enters the dormitory and sees a black cat sitting on the stairs. For some reason, the girl becomes tense after seeing it. Later at night, Erica comes to their house. Nonetheless, even after sitting there, she does not feel connected to this place. Her mother comes there and comments that she is looking good. Erica straightly comes to the point and asks Kaya if she needs her for something. Surprisingly, Kaya tells her that she knows she has found a potential dependent and it is Kauhei. Erika becomes tense after hearing this. Hence, she tries to deny it. But Kaya cuts her off and reminds her of the promise she made to her that, after going to school, she will find a person who will become her dependent. Kiriha is secretly eavesdropping on their conversation from the outside of the room. Kaya asks the girl that since she has someone now, then why isn't she turning him into a dependent already? Erika tries to argue with her mother, but Kaya's stern looks make her silent. After gathering her courage, Erika tells Kaya that in this day and age, they can supply themselves with blood from the blood banks and other alternatives, so why should they take dependence? Kaya keeps silent at this. 
Meanwhile, Erica argues with her mother that this world is different from theirs, so even without taking dependence, she can live with humans. However, Kaya thinks all this is nonsense, because transfusion of blood alone isn't enough to satisfy their thirst. Erica knows her mother is right in this aspect, but she still doesn't want to do this. Hence, she firmly tells her mother that no matter how great her thirst will be, she will endure it. Thus, she refuses to take orders from her mother and lays according to her liking. The next day, Laura gives the cultural festival organizer a day off. He tells them to enjoy their day and have fun. Kanad is also supporting Laurie in this. Thus, she comes up with a plan that they all will go to the beach, and after that, they watch the fireworks in Yukatas. Kauhei seems to like her plan, hence he states that a day off won't hurt them. Hence, he tells Erica that she also should take the day off and have fun with everyone. Surprisingly, the girl instantly agrees with him. Unfortunately, Shiro sadly informs them that she and Sei have dance practice tomorrow. Sei explains that it's the dance performed and presented to the gods during the Autumn Festival at Tamatsu Island Shrine. Apparently, events concerning the Tamatsu Island Shrine are among the most important to the Togas. Hence, Lori says to them that this dance is certainly worth watching. Haruna comes up with the idea that they should watch the fireworks at Tamatsu Island Shrine. Then Shiro and Sei can also participate with them. Everyone likes this idea. Thus, they decided to meet at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Erica is worried that she might crave blood. However, she feels that it's just one day, so she will be fine. The next day, they all go to the beach. There, they have a lot of fun while playing games and swimming in the water. After a while, they go to have lunch. Thus, Kauhei touches Erica's shoulder to tell her that they also should go. However, after the boy touches her, Erica feels a strong thirst for his blood. Thankfully, she controlled herself. Lori is watching her from afar and he seems to know about her condition. After some time, Erica is sitting alone as she is worried about her condition. Suddenly, Kauhei comes there and offers her water. This makes Erica jump in surprise since she was lost in her thoughts and didn't notice him coming. The boy looks at the sunset and states that time flies quickly when we enjoy ourselves. At this, the girl says that it's true, and when we wish for something to end quickly, it doesn't end at all. Erica is also looking at the beautiful sunset. She feels that fun memories will not fade. They shine in people's hearts forever. That's why she wants the cultural festival to be fun, so that they all remember it even after graduation and treasure it for the rest of their lives. Kauhei is looking at her all this time. Hence, he tells her that he wishes this day will be memorable for her also. At this, the girl becomes really happy, since this is the first time someone said anything like this to her. Kauhei tells her that she works really hard, but she needs to have fun too. At this, Erika gives him a sweet smile and tells him that he doesn't have to worry because today she really had fun. The boy feels pleased at this. He then stands up and offers her his hand to help her. Hence, Erika forwards to take his hand, but then she remembers her thirst. Thus, she quickly retires her hand and tells him that she will go ahead. After this, she quickly goes from there. Kauhei gets confused by her sudden change in behavior. Suddenly, Lori comes there and informs the boy that Erica is reaching her limit. She is short on blood. Lori explains that if they keep themselves from blood too long, then they are attacked by strong vampiric impulses. Thus, fighting and resisting against that instinct is a hellish torture for them. Erica is starting to show signs of it. Kauhei gets worried for her and asks Lori if they don't use blood transfusion at this time. At this, the boy states that in Erica's case, she is beyond the point of anything like that helping her. Lori knows his sister is stubborn so she won't listen to anyone once she sets her mind. Thus, he is hoping that things won't go wrong due to her resisting too much. Lori then passes by Kauhei and gives him the responsibility that he is counting on him in case of emergency. Later at night, they are going to the shrine. Lori is explaining the history of the shrine to them. However, Kauhei is not paying attention to it because he is worried for Erika. Hence, after looking at her for a while, he asks her if she is feeling fine. The girl reassures him that she is fine, so he doesn't have to worry about her. But the truth is, Erika is feeling pain and having difficulty in controlling it anymore. After a while, they meet Shiro and Sei. The girls then go and change her clothes. They look beautiful in yukatas. After some time, they go near the water for the fireworks. There, Erika is standing far from everyone. Her condition is not good, and she is having difficulty controlling her thirst. Kauhei notices that she is looking really pale, hence he asks her if she is fine. The girl's head spins as her vision gets blurred. However, she controls herself and manages to tell the boy that she is fine. 
Lori is watching them from a distance and he knows his sister is not fine. The fireworks start and everyone is enjoying them. Suddenly, Lori pushes everyone so that Kauhei can get close to Erika. Hence, Kauhei hugs Erika and surprisingly, the girl's eyes get red as she loses her control. She then goes from there so that she doesn't harm anyone. Kauhei follows her into the forest and holds her hand. Erika's eyes get red as she is losing control. Hence, she struggles to free herself, but Kauhei is not letting her go. He then firmly hugs her to comfort her. Erika loses her control and starts drinking from his neck. In this moment, something changes between them and they both know it. Erika wakes up in her and remembers what happened last night. Thus, she is wondering how she did get back to her room. Erika then feels happy as she thinks that she has endured the pain and passed it. In the morning, everyone at school is working hard preparing for the festival. Whereas, Erika is in a very cheerful mood today, as she is working happily. Lori notices this and asks her if something good happened to her. At this, the girl smiles and happily tells him that she thinks she can keep herself out of her mother's manipulation. At that moment, Kauhei comes there while carrying the material for the event. Erika scolds him for being late. After that, she goes near him to take the material. However, when she goes near him, she feels the same pain from earlier. Hence, she stumbles back and falls to the ground. At this moment, she realizes that it was not a dream, she really drinks blood from him. Hence, she feels really upset by this. Kauhei tries to get close to the girl to help her. However, she tells him to not come near her. She then tries to make him better by acting like she is fine. Hence, she stands up and tells him to help her organize the material. After that, she sits on the chair and starts working. Shiro becomes worried for the girl. Hence, she asks Lori if something is wrong with Erika, since she looked strange the moment Kauhei came in. Surprisingly, Sei scolds her that it's nothing she needs to concern herself with. Shiro tries to argue with him. But Lori says to her that Sei is right, this is a problem between Erika and Kauhei, so she should leave them alone. He then states that the time has come, and now they can't do anything about it. Hence, they should leave it and see what happens next. After a while, Kauhei is having lunch with Tsukasa. It appears he is worried about Erika. Suddenly, Kanadu runs towards him and angrily pastes the disciplinary sticker on his forehead. She is angry at him because yesterday he left them alone while they were watching fireworks. Haruna then points out that yesterday Erika was also not there. At this, the boy tells them that nothing is happening between Erika and him. Canada doesn't seem to believe him, hence she asks if that's the matter. Then what were they doing yesterday? Kauhei tries to come up with an excuse. Hence he tells the girl that the fireworks gave them a good idea, so they went to work on it. At this, Canada becomes excited as she assumes that Kauhei wants to arrange fireworks for the after party. Haruna asks him what he wants to do with the fireworks. At this, the boy becomes nervous and states that he wants to keep the idea secret until he makes it better. This boy is lying like this is his native language. As a sweet soul, Haruna offers to help him with anything he wants. Kauhei feels grateful, hence he says thanks to her. After that, he decides to focus on the work so that he can take some of Erika's burden. After a while, Erika is in her room. She is panicking since the blood is not working for her. All she wants now is Kauhei's blood. She is in great pain because of her thirst for Kauhei blood. The next day, Kauhei is supervising the students and notices that everyone is working hard. He then sees Erika talking with two boys. Hence, he decides to meet her. However, some other students call him for help. Thus, he goes to help them. After this, he looked in Erika's direction but she was not there. After some time, he comes to Lori's office to meet Erika. But the girl is not there, hence, he becomes disappointed. Sai then tells the boy to help him. Hence, Kauhei agrees to it. The whole day, the boy has been busy with tasks. He is working tirelessly for the festival. Even at night, he is working for a long time. The whole day, he didn't get the chance to meet Erika. Thus, after coming to his room, he thinks of calling Erika, but he then changes his mind and drops the phone. Meanwhile, Erika is in severe pain because she is not fulfilling her desire. Suddenly, Kiria comes inside the girl's room and asks her how long she thinks she can control herself. At this, Erika just looks at her. Surprisingly, Kiria reveals that Kauhei's blood is special. More importantly, he is starting to become special to Erika. Kiriha informs the girl that once she drinks Kauhei's blood, her thirst for his blood will become greater, and soon she won't be able to resist it. Kiriha gives Erika her mother's message. She tells her why she is hesitating for a person who willingly gave his blood. Kaya wants Erika to make Kauhei her dependent. After seeing Kiriha behave like that, Erika realizes that she is back to be with her mother. 
Kiriha ignores her and gives Kai's message to her that if she has no intention of taking independent, then she has to return to their mansion immediately. At this, Erika starts to panic since she thought that she still had time before graduation. She becomes really sad as she realizes that her mother is breaking their promise. Kiriha says to her that the time was given to her to find a dependent. However, if she chooses not to take on dependent, then it's as if the promise itself never existed. Erika gets angry at the unfairness of it. She angrily tells Kiriha that no matter what her mother says, she won't take a dependent. And before graduation, she will find a different way to live. Kiriha tells her to stop being stubborn about this. Surprisingly, Erika gets really angry at Kiriha and insults her that she is not going to hear this from her mother's pet. At this, Kiriha gets shocked. Meanwhile, Erika asks her why she chose to return to her evil mother. Erika tries to warn the girl that her mother will take away her memories one day, and then she is going to make her find her master without any idea of who it is. She will roam like a lost soul, spending decades to find her master, only for Kaya to take away her memories again. This is like an endless game, which will never end. Kiriha picks up the black and tells the girl that she can't disobey her master. Erika sadly says to her, that's the reason she doesn't want it. Because for a dependent, the master's orders are absolute. They will work everything word for word, even the tiniest mumble of their master is important to them. Erika is scared of the darkness inside of her. She is scared of what she may ask Kauhei to do if she takes him as a dependent. Also, Erika wants to live as a human. That's why she won't take a dependent. More importantly, she doesn't want to become like her mother. Kiriha feels sympathy for Erika. Hence, she tells Erika that she understands her situation. However, she cannot escape her fate. Therefore, she advises Erika to think about it and make a rational decision. After this, she goes from there. In the middle of the night, Kauhei wakes up by a loud thud coming from his balcony. Hence, he gets alert and goes to see what happens. Funnily, Canada is dangling from the stairs attached to her room, looking like a surprised cat stuck on a curtain. She then embarrassedly wishes good morning to the boy. After a while, Canada is in the Kauhei room. Kanada shows the boy Teru Teru Boju she is holding and explains with a grin that she wanted to hang these to get the sun out so that the preparation for the festival can go smoothly. I bet the sun will come out just to see her cute smile. Kauhei asks the girl if that's the matter then what was she doing on his balcony. Funnily, the girl cutely explains that she thinks it might be more effective hanging from the head organizer's balcony. Canada, you're as cute as a button. But sometimes I wonder if your brain took a vacation without you. Kauhei looks done with her logic. Haruna comes there with tea and tells them to let this slide since they can have tea after so long. Kanada excitedly states that they should call Erika also. However, Haruna tells her to leave her alone, since she must be tired from all the work. After that, they are sharing ideas for the after party. Kanada tells them that it will be nice if they can have something they can take home as a memory for that remarkable day. Kauhei's head feels full of all the ideas, hence he tells Kanada to slow down. However, after seeing her playing with Teru Teru Bozu, Kauhei gets a new idea for the after party. After some time, he excitedly enters Lori's office. The boy notices that Erika is not there again, hence he asks Shiro about her. Seems like Shiro knows about Erika's condition. Thus, she becomes hesitant to tell the boy. Lori decides to help Shiro as he tells the boy that he has sent Erika to the market so that she can talk with the shopping district about the prizes. It appears Erika is trying to stay out of Kauhei's sight, so she's hiding in the room adjoining Lori's office. Sai asks Kauhei if he has some work with Erika. Thus, the boy informs them that he has an idea for the after party, so he wants her to see it too. Shiro curiously asks him about the idea. Hence, Kauhei reveals that it's a parachute of happiness. He then explains the idea to them. Shiro really likes his idea and tells him that Erika will also like this idea. Kauhei is hoping for it since he knows the girl always prioritizes the student's happiness over herself as a member of the student council. That's why he wants her to at least enjoy the after party as a student of the Shuchikin Academy. Hence he gives the dairy to Shiro and tells her to give it to Erika. Shiro wants to tell him about Erika, but Sei stops her from doing that. Erika comes to the room after Kauhei leaves from there. Shiro asks her how she is feeling. At this, the girl dryly replies that she is feeling better than before. Shiro is still worried for her, hence she asks her if she is fine with the way things are happening. Erika tells her that she is fine, but when she thinks about Kauhei, she feels a strong urge to go to him and drink his blood. Lori knows if she meets the boy, then she will lose control and attack his neck. 
and if she does that, then her desire for his blood will grow. Lori is trying to make her understand that she has to take Kauhei as her dependent. Erica tells him to stop since she is losing her control. Seeing her in that condition, Shiro feels sad for her. Hence, she asks Lori if there is any other way they can make Erika and Kauhei's relationship like before. Lori states that if there is a blood donor to replace Kauhei, then it's possible. However, the thing is Kauhei's blood is special, so to find another person who has the same blood as him is very difficult. Surprisingly, Shiro announces that she will become Erika's dependent. Because if she does this, then Kauhei won't have to become a dependent. Sai doesn't seem to like her idea as he gets tense. Meanwhile, Erika gets worried for her. She informs her that becoming a dependent means she will no longer be human. At this, Shiro starts crying as she tells them that it is hurting her to see Erika in so much pain and watch Kauhei working so hard without knowing what's going on. Hence, she wants to help them. Sai gets angry at her and scolds her to not say such ridiculous things. Surprisingly, for the first time, Shiro doesn't listen to his brother. She firmly states that if it's the fate of the Sendos to have dependents, then it's the fate and duty of the Togas to serve them. Sei gets really angry, hence he grabs Lori by the collar and yells at him that he never said anything like this could happen. At this, Lori tells Sei to calm down and explains that, just as Sei cares deeply for Shiro, he too wants Erika to find her own path in life. Lori then orders Sei to let him go. After this, Erika asks her brother if he intentionally brings Kauhei to the student council, knowing that this would happen. Hence, the boy confidently replies that just like a big brother he wanted her to have a happy life. Erika gets angry at him for doing this. Shiro gets scared by all this. Hence, Erika hugs her and comforts her that no matter what happens, she won't do anything that would take her future away. She then firmly tells her brother that she will decide her own path in life. Later at night, Erika is weakly sitting outside of Kauhei's room. She seems to be in intense pain and also she is losing her control. Hence, she leaves the paper hot balloon outside of his room. After some time, Erika meets Kiriha outside in the rain. The girl seems to have made her decision. On the other hand, Lori has high hopes for Kauhei. He feels that the boy will be able to set her sister free from their mother's clutches. Erika has returned back to her home where she is locked in a small room. Kaya is disappointed in her daughter. Hence, she thinks that Erika is a failure. The next day, Kauhei gets ready for school. He finds the paper hot balloon outside of his room. He then goes to Lori's office and there he meets Shiro. As usual, he didn't see Erika there, hence he asked Shiro if Erika wants to say something to him. At this, Shiro gets curious and asks him why he asks this. At this, the boy informs her that he found the paper balloon outside of his room. Shiro really wants to tell him about Erika, but Sei stops her. Lori then gives him the papers and tells him that his idea for the after party is good, so he should start working on it. Kauhei wants to know what Erika thinks about it. Hence, he asks Lori about what Erika thinks of this idea. At this, Lori tells him that he doesn't have to worry about her since she is no longer there. Kauhei gets worried about her. Thus, he asks the boy what he means by that. At this, Shiro starts crying and tells him that it's her fault because she told Erika that she would become her dependent. After some time, Lori takes Kauhei to the chapel so that they can talk alone. There, the boy informs him that Erika has returned back to her home. Kauhei gets worried since he knows the girl doesn't want to be there. Because her wish was to live as a human at the school. That's why she wasn't going to drink blood from people or take dependents. At this, Lori accuses him of giving blood to Erika on that day. Thus, Kauhei tries to clarify that he wanted to support her. And that's why he did that. Lori informs him that once they drink blood directly from a human, they face strong urges to have more. And once that happens, transfusion blood won't satisfy their cravings. Lori tells the boy that Erika has suffered too much because she was fighting to control her thirst. But in the end she was losing her control. Shiro saw her struggling, hence she offered to her dependent. But Erika refused her because she didn't want to destroy her future. Erika was completely losing control, she knew if she saw blood then she wouldn't stop herself from taking it. That's why she made that difficult decision. Kauhei is feeling sad about her. Thus, Lori gets close to him and states that there is still time. Hence, he tells the boy to decide if he is going to help her and be her dependent or not. After a while, Kauhei is watching the students preparing for the festival. He feels bad that the person who loves school so much is not there. Thus, the boy is feeling bad, since he thinks that it's his fault. However, he can't seem to decide what he is supposed to do. A few days go like this. 
the students are missing Erica and waiting for her to come back so that they can proudly show her the work they did for the festival. Kauhei is also terribly missing Erika. Haruna and Kanade notice the boy's sad mood, hence they try to cheer him up by stating that they will do the tea party tonight. They then think of inviting Erika also, hence, Kanade tells the boy to bring Erika to the party. Kauhei gets upset at this since he can't do this. Later at night, Kanade, Haruna, and Shikasa are waiting in Kauhei's room for him and Erika. However, the boy came alone, hence he lies to his friends that Erika is busy, and that's why she can't come there. Kanada and Haruna are continuously talking about Erika, and this is making the boy sad, because he knows that the girl is not coming back. Suddenly, the boy loses his patience and tells his friends that Erika is not coming back ever. However, they don't believe him and think that he is joking, because they know Erika loves this school too much, and she won't miss the cultural festival at any cost. Shikasa tells the boy that he can't even imagine the festival without Erika. Kauhei becomes sad seeing their hopeful faces. Haruna then asks him if what he is saying is true, and then is he fine with the way things are happening. At this, the boy becomes silent. Haruna tells him that she doesn't like seeing him tense like this, nor does she enjoy not being able to see Erika. They want the boy to bring back Erika and take responsibility for his mistake. Kauhei smiles at them as he finally decides what he should do. Thus, he stands up and promises them that he will bring back Erika to the next tea party. Hence, without wasting any time, he goes to bring back Erika. Lori meets him in the middle of the path and takes him to meet Kaya, whereas Kiriha is also bringing Erika there. Kaya asks Kauhei why he wants to meet her. She then tells him to come close to her. Thus, Kauhei sits in front of her. Kaya observes him closely. She smirks as she realizes that he is not afraid of her. Kauhei is straight to the point as he tells her that he is there for Erika. At this, Kaya asks him if he has come to become her dependent willingly. Surprisingly, the boy tells her no and states that he will not become her dependent. At this, Kaya becomes angry. Meanwhile, Lori seems to be proud of him. Kauhei then confidently tells Kaya that he is there to take Erika back. Kaya angrily asks him why he wants to take her back. Kauhei calmly responds that they need Erika with them and most importantly, she needs a school life where she can be with everyone she loves. However, Kaya remains unconvinced and thinks that Erika needs to have a dependent. But the boy tells her that the girl wants to live as a human, and for that, she needs her school life. Kaya's eyes angrily become red as she gets pissed at the boy. Hence, without warning, she uses her powers to throw him backward. After this, she angrily tells him that a mere human like him knows nothing. Surprisingly, she is choking him by holding his neck tightly. She states they need a stable source of blood to live at ease and companions to live their eternal lives with. That's why they take dependence. Even in the pain, the boy says to her that Erica doesn't want this. What she wishes for are friends who understand her. All this time, Lori is standing there and watching this amusingly. He seems to be impressed with the boy for putting up a fight with his mother. Meanwhile, Say gets angry at Lori for intentionally bringing Kauhei there when he knows they would happen. Lori arrogantly tells him that he has high hopes for Kauhei. Kaya seems to be offended by this. Thus, Lori says to her that he is just interested in seeing what will happen as a result of his sister's wishes. He wants to know if his cute sister can find her new path in life or not. At this, Kaya angrily tells him there is no new path for his sister since the boy is dying there. Luckily, Erika comes there at the right time because her mother is nearly killing Kauhei. Forget the rusty armor, Kanada is here to rescue Kauhei like a modern-day princess. Kaya throws the boy towards Erika. Hence, Kauhei becomes happy to see her after a long time. Meanwhile, Erika feels a strong desire to drink his blood. Kaya tells her that this is her last chance to make this boy her dependent. However, Erika responds that she can't do this. At this, Kaya threatens her that if she can't do this, then the boy has to die. Erika defensively tells her that she won't let her kill him. She then tells her mother that she can't take Kauhei as her dependent. After this, she desperately requests the boy to go from there. However, Kauhei says to her how can she expect him to go back alone when he is there to take her. Erika gets frustrated by his stubbornness. Thus, she tries to make him understand that he has to go from there to survive. However, Kauhei asks her if something changes in her or if her pain decreases after she leaves the school. At this, the girl becomes silent. It seems Kauhei has his answer. He then says to her, if her suffering is the same, then she might as well endure it at the academy she loves. At least there, she'll be surrounded by people who care about her and she can share her pain with them. 
However, the girl tells him that she can't hold herself back. Surprisingly, Kauhei offers her to drink his blood. He doesn't know what she is going through, but he can ease her suffering a little for her. Erika feels really emotional after seeing love in his eyes. As a bus skill, Kaya ruins the moment by mentioning that if Erika takes another sip of Kauhei's blood, then there will be no choice for Kauhei since he will become Erika's dependent. At this, Kauhei confidently stands up and states that whether he may become her dependent or may not is up to them to divide. Everyone is taken aback by her bravery and seeing him with shocked faces. Kauhei then offers his hand to Erika and tells her to go back to Shochikin Academy. After hesitating for a while, Erika finally holds his hand and happily agrees to go with him. After that, they both went to their academy. Kaya is fine with it for now because she thinks that Erika will eventually create Kauhei's blood and then her idealism will change. Kaya then orders Kiriha to go back to school and give her their updates. Kiriha is feeling troubled by all this. Hence, she wants to know what she means for Kaya. Therefore, she asks her. However, Kaya rudely orders her to shut up. On the other hand, Kanada, Sukasa, and Haruna get really happy to see Erika back. Hence, they all hug her and shower her with love. The next day, they all celebrate the cultural festival. Hence, they are having a lot of fun as they indulge in various activities, games, and delicious food. There is no doubt they all created unforgettable memories for all of them to cherish for life.